Melanie P. That's scary with Melanie P. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Welcome to another episode with a live podcaster. Welcome to another episode of the That's Scary with Melanie P podcast. This is my first episode since my uh, live episode, and I'm so excited to be here. We have a guest on the show today, Jason. I'm back. Please. I'm back, you know. <laughs> uh, you're not reading cue friend, cards. I'm a friend to the show. Here we go. I'm back today. Friend to the show, uh, Lambo. I'm not sure if we're able to give your real name yet, but whatever. Um, welcome to the show, guys. I am feeling really, really, really good today. Uh, we're actually filming in our night night clothes. <laughs> some of us own night clothes, some of us don't. I'm actually wearing, I gotta give a shout out, um, my That's, That's Scary with Melanie P. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> the that's scary with Melanie P T shirt, yeah. Jana. Thank you. I know you're listening. The shirt looks really good, and if you cannot see it, that means you haven't subscribed to my YouTube. So make sure you do that. Um, we always start every episode with a mental health check in. So, um, last week's episode, I'm sure you guys have seen it. Um, I just realized my nails are not done. Oh my god, I gotta edit that part out. Um. Yo, so last week's episode was the live taping of my show. It was the first time I've ever taped in front of an audience. Yes. Oh my God. Um, Be nervous? <sighs> nervous was not the word. So I want to kind of, um, this show is going to be mainly about kind of like talking about last week's episode, the build up to it. And then we have a few really good hot topics that we could not resist talking about this week. But as far as last week, so where, where am I at right now? Mental health, I'm feeling really good. Um, I, I have, uh, it's Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday. And so I'm really trying to stay on a positive frequency before the work week begins. Um, so I am feeling great. I'm going to say that I'm feeling great. I'm going to speak it. I'm feeling awesome. How are you feeling, Jason? I'm good. You know, I wish it was still the weekend past <laughs> this. So, mm. um, but I am feeling good. Uh, just, you know, just enjoying the summer. Wanted to the weekdays to last longer. Wanted to just be off for the summer, basically. Right. God. I saw something online where it was saying, like, um, you know, they give these kids three months off, man. They need to give adults three months off. And I really am really in right, agreement with that, man. Plus. Like, we are the ones that need three weeks or three free. I would be happy with three weeks, but give me three months off. Well, that's why teachers are happy. You know, you wonder why <gasps> are they'll, they happy, they'll do though? Well, I mean, th that's part of the reason they'll teach mm. um, for that time off, I would think. You know, yeah, I guess. Nice break. Imagine if you had three months off. Let's just say two months. Imagine if you knew that you had two. Who you had a summer off. Imagine if as an adult you knew that you had two freaking months off. Now, should it be paid or not? How would that work? Like in real life. Like I let's mean, say this was this was a really a possibility. Would it be paid? Probably not. So I guess you would no, have it might, to. It might not be paid, but people are living this lifestyle right. with, with much more than two months off. Exactly. Know, so. And two months is just like, what, two mortgages. You know what I'm saying? Two power bills. I mean, shit. Like, and, you know, let's get into existence. That could be an option. You know, so maybe there could be, when this happens or if this ever happens, it could be many options. Like, you know, you could stretch your salary out to cover those months. You could opt not to do it. You could opt not to get paid. So I'm sure if we lived in a world where adults were able to have like two months off there will be a lot of great options um for this but you know we can dream can't we we have to dream you know it is it's definitely a dream <laughs> and oh shit it's definitely definitely a dream um i don't know i don't know it's a dream but anyway we're feeling good so back to last week's episode oh my god y'all um how'd he go Nigga, you was here talking about how did it go? Oh my God. <laughs> how did it go? Yeah, did it go? That's a loaded, loaded question. Um, man, that show, I, I don't even know if I can put into words 
everything that I'm thinking. So like the show was a success. Let's just start there. The show was a success. I had about 20, 25 people in an audience for the first time when I filmed this, ep- my episode last week. And it, I was nervous. Like nervous was not the word. The more and more I saw people coming in that door, the more I was like, give me a drink. Cause <laughs> I need to like, and it's so scary because like, the drinks weren't kicking in. Like, I think I drank a whole half a bottle of Jameson. Sober, you know? I, I know. Until I was too came. sober <laughs> until the nighttime came. Right. Then, until afterwards. Then the but. demon came out. You know, demon time. But um, that's, a, that's a horrible phrase. But, oh, my God. Like, I was drinking and drinking and drinking and drinking, trying my best to... um get a little bit tipsy before the show. And the more I drink, the more sober I felt, man. Like, yo, it... It was, I'll say it was a learning experience because I've gotten so many compliments for the people who was there, people who've heard the show, so many compliments and stuff, but just as a creator, as a podcaster for a, you know, a little over a year, um, and as a, just my personality type, all I saw were the errors, like, you know, all I saw and all I heard were the errors. So for me, whereas everyone said that it was so great, it really was. And it was an awesome experience, but all I saw is damn next time I'm gonna do this differently. And next time I'm gonna do dif- this well, it differently. Was a, it was a good show. Yeah. I'll speak from yeah. the perspective. Everybody enjoyed You're it. You're in the front row. Um, I was in the front row. It was nice to have a little bit of, <laughs> <laughs> of a studio audience to really get the blood mm. flowing, you know, and, and you handled it really well. Yeah, on the uh, outside that, I did. You know, the, the show was great, so. Yeah, it's so the funny. The party was better after. The you, party? You oh, my God. Show. Ain't nothing like a uh, whatever this place is party. Um. <laughs> Um, my sister-in-law, she was saying how, like, she was sitting there in the audience and she was like, man, she is really cool as a cucumber. And she was like, she is really up here in front of all these people killing it. And all that I was thinking when she said that was, I was up there panicking. Like, when the show first started, I was stalling so much. Oh, my God. When the so... It was a good studio. It was a real atmosphere. I felt like it was on a talk show. You know? I was stalling. So bit. I was totally, totally stalling. So um, like one of my friends, Mia, friend to the show, obviously I love her. She was late, but low key, I was happy she was late because I was nervous as fuck. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm waiting for Mia to get here. But honestly, I was just nervous to start. So I just used that as like a excuse, <laughs> as an excuse. But I realized that, you know, people, people were getting antsy. And, right. you know, people were ready to, like, see what we were here for. So I was like, okay, let's let's just get this shit started, man. I mean, that was probably, like, 20,000 shots in. I still was feeling so damn, like, not tipsy. So then finally I walked up to the front. I sat there. And, like, when I sat in that seat, I thought I was going to shit him. <laughs> I thought I was going to shit on myself. I was like, what am I doing? Like, all I kept all I kept thinking in my head is, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then, you know, and at this point, I'm like, you know what, bitch? Just tell this nigga to tell, tell my brother to, to play the music. And right. he did. And I was up there sweating. Like, sweat was dripping from my underarms. Um, It was just like, this deodorant wearing off. This liquor is not kicking in. It was just crazy. But I feel like... um. Once the show started officially and I was able to kind of officially kind of like, I always say when you're on the podcast, a lot of the guests and including, including myself, I used to be, but I've I've done it so many times, but like, it used to be like, you'll sit in that chair for a good, like we're seeing now with Jason, (laughs) you'll sit in that chair for about five, sometimes 10 minutes before you warm up. And then once you warm up, (laughs) and then once you warm, no nigga, you ain't warm. warm. Um, and then (laughs) let me feel. Oh. And then once you warm up, then it's like, okay, I mean, especially if you're a talker like we are, like once you warm up, it's just, it just flows, flows, flows. But sometimes it takes a lot of people, like a lot, like about good well, five minutes to warm up. Audience. That was it. It was just the, the initial studio audience. And this is going to be awesome, as I was saying, moving forward, we're ready. Uh, I know you've been ready, but having a studio audience atmosphere, first live show, it was, it was a, it was special, you know, it was a good mm. experience. It was a lot of fun. It was it's definitely always good to yeah. get a little bit of nerves up front on yeah. anything you do. So it was I thought, definitely, I it was definitely good. a learning. Like for me, it was just learning. Like it was so many things that I would have done differently. Like I would have invested more time on my outline of my show. I would have like did had more time for the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> for the speakers. For the speakers. Like I would have um Honestly, I would have uh, invested more conversation into the audio because that piece kind of made me a little bit upset, um, but not not a big deal. Um, and then, yeah, I think really the outline and 
the audio really were the main things that I would have kind of changed. Oh, um, it was good. I mean, yeah. you know, um, the audience had a little bit of feedback. They could. Oh my god! And the audience you know, now. Another thing I would have. I'm talking about y'all, but questions. another thing I would have changed was the audience now. They could have had more questions. Well, they could have had more questions, but honestly, they didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't know. And again, that would have been, if I had kind of invested a little bit more time, I would have, you know, like, let everybody know in that, in the invite and stuff, because it was private invite only. Um, I would have let them know to make sure that they, you know, think of some questions to ask, whatever, whatever. But also, I would have emphasized uh, you know, this is a live taping, so you can't be having side conversations throughout the entire show. Now, that's another thing that I wish I would have really emphasized that I really didn't <laughs> emphasize. Um, and that made me nervous too. Um, you know, there were some side conversations and, you know, it's all love, but there were some side conversations going on and people like, it was a lot of editing. So I'm sure you haven't heard the show, but I had to edit out a lot, a lot of stuff because of comments in the audience and so if you listen to my show on the podcast or on youtube which i'm sure you already have um you'll hear where it just kind of cuts from one thing to another because i had to edit out had to rig crazy out. i had to, I had to, what i had to do had to rig it what kind of rig, <laughs> you think what type of rig? <laughs> we had a nigga rig it um <laughs> So, yeah. So, I mean, other than that, I'm just so, I was just so blessed and honored to have everybody here. And then the after party, yo, the, like, let me tell you something. I know I have uh, listeners from all over and I'm sure you will never get the, well, maybe you, honestly, you probably will get the experience, uh, a party that I host because I'll be worldwide probably by next year, this time, um, hosting parties and hosting events and stuff. I mean, I invite you. I invite you, Jason. <laughs> I'll get in the back door. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will get in the back door. <laughs> But um, the party was everything. Like we had a lot. I I try my best to have a you know have the you know the the drinks flowing the, the, the you know the food. We had amazing food. Um, we had entertainment. Listen, we had entertainment. Um, we had everything. We no had everything. Left. It was not. It was. It wasn't a. I don't think I had. I think I had a little bit of pasta salad, and I didn't get none of my friends banging chicken salad. I didn't get um, no, any chicken or anything. So I'm like, whatever. You know, I don't even eat chicken like that. But other than that, man, the epi- the episode turned out well. Um, you know, for it for it for it to be my first one, you know, it turned out really well. And I'm, I'm really, ready for really the grateful. next. You ready for the next live show? Ugh, no time soon. Like. <laughs> I don't want ready for another live show. I'm Be not ready. ready to host any damn thing else in 2023 other than my baby's first birthday. Like other right. than that, I don't want like that that be a shit, live segment on that. <laughs> that thing was that live show was the most draining thing I've probably ever been through in a very long time. Like mentally draining, time draining. I think I'm just now getting rested. I think the house just is just now getting back. I mean, it was just, uh, it was just so much. So no time soon. But I will say that I, po- I likely will do a live taping on my second year anniversary. Maybe not in the same location that I had it this year. Um, probably on a bigger scale yeah, for sure. Um, but definitely, I'm just, I'm excited for the future for sure. How was your experience? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, being in the audience. So you had the dual experience. You were able to be in the audience and you were able to be on the stage. So like, what was your perspective, like sitting in the audience? And then what was your perspective, like being on the stage? Were you like, were you nervous? Be honest. Well, I was a little nervous for yeah. your first minute, but then I felt comfortable first after five that. Minutes. No, I don't <laughs> say. Probably the first 35 minutes. Was <laughs> but I was, no, I felt all right. Um, the atmosphere in the crowd was good. You know, there was, you know, still, uh, whatever side conversations weren't going to stop, you know, the podcast from happening. No, oh, I couldn't stop. You it know, was live. So, I couldn't no, stop. I still, you still were out there doing your thing on the, you know, um, people just were, it was new for them. I don't oh, know if they sure. ever experienced right. a live podcast yeah. taping and yeah. the, the etiquette necessary to, to, you know, yeah. not, you know, be niggeristic, you know, but listen, you knew that was gonna happen, man. Niggers. You know, people needing to take drink breaks in between. Oh the my podcast. god, people getting I mean, up, I mean, going to just, the bathroom, like in know, the camera. <laughs> people yelling people. out, um, ho, and this. And I mean, honestly, I haven't even, heard, like, it was one segment, and I won't name it, but it was one segment where there was a lot of conversation going on in the audience, and I, I haven't even built up enough, um, courage. To take out the edits? To listen to that segment. Oh, you got to listen to it and then throw out some of the cloud edits. And honestly, 
honestly um our uh videographer i think his name is i'm gonna put it in the link because he, he did a really good job i think it's the at the eye box but anyway um he had like a certain uh system where he was able to hook up the audio directly to the microphone so any kind of like audience noise wasn't prominent um but still some of the stuff that i heard i was like i don't want to hear this i mean you know what i'm saying or i don't even want to think about this shit being in my audio so i well, whatever but it was good man like like i had people travel far like Kian came from winston-salem um tiffany and her husband came from sumter which was so like i was just so grateful for that um it was a lot of going on but it was it was awesome i'm ready actually I am, i'm ready for next year i'm ready i'm ready to perfect the next live well, show we gotta perfect the live show soon you know yeah a little bit i mean not to all the way till next year the last show was fun the first one out of the way you know <laughs> absolutely it's time because it's, it's you know it's just more goes on on a live taping exactly exactly all right so listen we're not gonna hold you guys too long because we're listen like we are saying we are um filming in our pajamas what what are we doing after this i don't know have another drink and then what sit back and talk for a few minutes and then what tasting oh boy who knows disgusting um <laughs> all right so we have a few hot topics y'all <laughs> a few hot topics i'm gonna kick it off with the most hottest topic of this week and i know you've heard the sound across america of kiki palmer's baby daddy uh what is his name darius i'm not gonna like honor him with a name because he is just everything that i think is disgusting in men um but anyway so kiki palmer is has a kid with darius dalton and let me give you some background so kiki palmer everyone knows that usher is having his live um residency in las vegas and every time he has like a, cel a celebrity in the show or in the audience he'll pull them up from the audience and sing to them and it's very common we know to expect it so kiki palmer has been very vocal about you know she just had a baby and she is loving her post baby body her body's right. looking good she's looking amazing and she's flaunting it you know what i'm saying like she's been pregnant for nine months just had a baby you know and everything's sitting right and she's excited about it so she has been very vocal about how she loves her new curves, right? So she went to the Usher Raymond residency in Las Vegas. She had on a really sexy, I think it was Gifonji, um, Fendi or something. What word? No, what word? No, all, I'm not sure what's been going on with you today because them words you've been saying are Vinci. not real words. What word did you say at the restaurant? Serieses? Serieses. <laughs> not a word. I know, but it can be. No, you thought it was a word no. before I told you it was. Series wasn't. can be understood. Series is, is not a word. It's series. I didn't say it was a word. You did. No, I said it can be understood to make okay, sense. Okay, so now it's a whole different con. Series, not series. Is. <laughs> but anyway. Um, okay. So anyway, Kiki um, Palmer, she had on her designer outfit looking really, really good. She wears what most of us women wear. If you go out somewhere fancy, you know, we sheer show off our body, whatever. You know, it as. a sheer dress. So. Her baby's father said, it's the outfit, though, you a mom. He said, we live in a generation where a man of, of the family doesn't want the wife and mother to his kids to showcase booty cheeks to please others. And he gets told how much of a hater he is. This is my family and my reputation. I have standards and morals to what I believe in. I rest my case. Jason, what are your thoughts on this story? Well, I mean, he has no case. He has no leg to stand on, you know, but he Ugh. doesn't make any sense. Um, this is 2023. It's not 1926 20. where a woman can't even go outside. This is not, you know, Sharia law where a woman needs to be head to toe. And even it's I think that in Sharia law over in Afghanistan, you know, women are supposed to be covered. You know, in a lot of Muslim areas, women are covered. Oh, I know. Um, Sharia you know, by law. law, but we're not in an area, and even there, sometimes I think it can be less covered. But we're not living in that, those type of times. But this is the thing; it's not realistic. So I would ask him, "Is what closet he has her locked up in every day?" Mm. Because anytime she walks the streets, any man is going to be looking at her ass cheeks, her booty cheeks, her <laughs> breasts, her titties, her face. Men are going to look at every single thing. As long as your woman's in the streets, niggas are going to look. So why the fuck do we care about them looking? 
Um, because we, if we wanted to care about them looking, you need to lock her the fuck up. Because that's the only way dudes aren't going to look at her. So what he said was ridiculous. Women can do what they want as far as showing themselves. If they feel good and look good, then look good. And it's actually inspirational to moms to that can still look good. It is what it is. So I support her. I support my woman looking good here on sitting here doing a little much. My woman does too much all the time. I tell her that, but I just laugh, you know, but it is what it is. How do I do too much? Somebody, I mean, when you show off some tight pants, it's just too much. You know, but it is what it is. If this is how you're going to continue to dress, <laughs> and you know, you're allowed and to and a little am. bit. You want to dress inappropriately as a mom? Who? You always want to be a milf in the street. And uh, am. Here's here the thing. Are, Here's the know? thing. So it is what it is. I'm cool with it because a woman's going to get looked at regardless. You know, not all women. <laughs> but how you dr- how a woman dresses does affect the, some of her looks. Clearly, obviously, but. Um, a, a sheer dress is all she was wearing, and and these women wear nothing outside. And he's upset about a sheer dress. So here's my response to you and to Darius: There is no ring and last name change on her finger, and I'll leave it there. There's no ring on her finger. So it, I can see both sides of this, and let me explain. Um, I don't see any of his sides because he has not made this woman a wife. So that's where the story, in my opinion, ends point blank, period. If you're not, she's a single woman. I don't care how many babies he he puts out of her, how many, um, whatever he does, she's a single woman. Now, should she respect her partner? Absolutely. Is her last name Dalton? No, it is not. So I can't say nothing else. Like, like you're not her husband. You got her knocked up and didn't even make her a Dalton. Is that his last name? Let me make sure. It's, yeah. Uh, a Dalton, whatever his last name is, Dalton. So I, it stops there. Now, I do applaud him on one end for, you know, having morals. And I applaud him for, you know, I morals. guess well having morals he's saying he's, he said can't wear a sheer I, dress. I, I want to get my, my opinion like you did um you he, he said that you know it's his morals and he's going to be condemned for having his morals so I respect the fact that you have morals and let's say it was a different situation where this was his actual wife then my opinion might be very different because I feel like as a wife you need to respect your part as a wife or a husband you got to respect your partner's wishes you know that's one two if they were married, I would have hoped that they had known each other long enough to where he understands, you know, this is my wife. This is how she dresses, whatever, whatever the case might be. And, you know, go from there. I also feel like this is a red flag for Kiki and I hope she runs because I don't, no one even knew who a Darius, Darius Dalton was before Kiki. What we do know is Kiki. We all stand for Kiki, um, Kiki Palmer. And I don't know her personally, None of us do. But what I do know is that she has a very outgoing personality. Okay. Um, And the fact that he has to know that if we know that. And it feels very insecure. It feels very red flag that he went on social media. Didn't even go to her behind closed doors. This is your baby mama. I'm sure you you have her phone number. Why would you intentionally publicly humiliate your child's mom? For what? So to me, that's a red flag and that screams insecurity. And I, oh, and course. honestly, I feel like she should be grateful that he's showing her this red flag now um, so she can get out of there. Well, dudes don't aren't like me are going to respect what he said anyway. It's just clownish. So it's, it's clownish, but it's also a red flag. And I feel like God gives right. us signs, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, they've had the kid again. I don't know what Darius does. I think he's an actor or or he's maybe a personal maybe. trainer. OK, so I, think, I think he's a trainer. Well, Booted that. I thought he was up, upcoming. I, I thought I he was trying him. to write. I thought he was trying to be an actor. But regardless of Who what knows? he, I just saw that on a clip. I don't know. Regardless of what he is, he's an insecure man. Like that's all he is. Like he's an well, insecure no, he's, man. He might just want to be controlling. Some men are controlling. That's, and controlling equals insecurity. And in, in, well, in some yes, it yes. is some in some ways, but it's also it's worse than that because these men that are controlling, we we all have our own life to live and lead, and they want to dominate it. You know, who, who uh, you're not God. So mm-hmm. it's, it's deeper than that, but we'll digress, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I just, I feel like this is definitely a, um, a red flag. I think that the major flag. Yeah. I think that she should be grateful. Like I said, I think she should, she should totally be grateful, um, that 
he's giving her this sign now. Even after the fact, I've heard that. I've heard. I've heard. Publicity. (laughs) What? Publicity. You gonna try it again? No. (laughs) (laughs) I heard that he has even. I don't know if this is kind of gossip, but I did hear recently that he tried to fly some woman out because I guess he unfollowed Kiki on social media and then he shut down his social media and then he went back on social media and then hopped in some woman's DM to fly her out. Like with with whose money? With Kiki's money? Like he's a nobody. Like like and and God forgive me, he's not a nobody. We're all somebody. But I don't I just don't respect that he did this on Front Street, even if he had these certain opinions about what she wore as a grown ass man, which he's not, he should have called her or wait, should, wait, waited until she got home and said, Hey, I really, I didn't prefer what you had on or how you acted, blah, blah, blah. And that could have been a conversation behind closed doors. Well, again, but, for me, but, but for me, what he did to me, it feels like he set out to intentionally hu- humiliate her. And I feel like, the fact that he had that kind of intention, nobody, nobody holds a gun to nobody's head to post anything on Twitter or Instagram or anywhere. So the fact that you actually sat down and said, you know, I got her phone number. She, she we live together. She's got, she has to come home. Screw all that. I'm going to go on social media and I'm going to actually embarrass her. Well, back he had, well, this is the problem that backfired on him because I, yeah. I, I think that when people actually look at his comments, they can think he's the one who's ridiculous. I don't really think, Again, you see how I look at it. I don't think it humiliates her at all. I think more like what you said, it's a red flag or, in it's woman terminology, in my term, he's just a clown. Right. You know, he just is saying something stupid. Again, You, I don't care if you're married, not married, engaged, or on your first date. You can't stop another nigga in the street from looking at your woman's ass unless you're just going to shoot him. Well, her hey, ass nigga was looks out. At your, I don't give a fuck if your ass is out. Some niggas like little booty, small booty. It's just natural for a man to look. I don't give a fuck, and and then that's why women. I'm making clips out of this, so please don't be cursing. I'm sorry. That's why they do the BBL, um, whatever type of treatments, because they know they're at. You women know you're. We're looking at your ass. Why else are you doing the BBL? Why else are you wearing the slimmers? Why else are you <laughs> doing this? Why you got the girl slash upgraded why, why you got slimmer the beard? on? Because I don't like to shave. Okay, that's that's why. Yeah. <laughs> I get really tired of you coming for women and stuff like that because you, you you forget that men have their makeup, men have their form of you know waist trainer, men have their form of BBL too. Look, my point is not that women. I, I appreciate anything a woman wants to do to her body to to upgrade herself. Women are allowed to do whatever they want. Um, you know what I was just saying was not worth an argument, y'all. <laughs> Don't dumb down now. Stay stick. Stay with it. <laughs> stay with it. If that's your opinion, because you've said it several times, but I just feel like you know, I just don't. I don't respect that. I don't respect him, and I don't respect that at all. At all. No, he he didn't pick up fans. He he went. To oh yeah, he lost fans. He lost. Fans. I feel like they're set out to cancel fans. him. No, I mean We're obviously he didn't even. I know. Podcast, more credibility than we he are. deserves. You know. Because no, no one knew his name. No one knew no, his name. No, I thought he was um I thought he was a weirdo. Family Matters when I saw the first name part, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. He's a porn star. Then now. I saw him. Uh, that's cool. But then yeah. I saw him. He looked like from a, he was from an Indian reservation, you know, when I saw his <laughs> pictures. I know the fuck he was. It is what it is, you know. Um, I saw his picture with her, and I was like, she was. she had a baby with this dude. I was just like, man, he wants to comment. I said, this dude's a straight weirdo. And he's good. He's not humiliating her. He's humiliating her because she had a baby or was with this scrub. So let's so flip it. Let, let's flip it. And, and I, I want you to be honest. I want you to be super, super honest. If you were married, let's just say you were married and you had a wife that went out and had on something to where her butt was fully out, like thong, butt fully out, like naked, fully out. You'd be fine with that? No, but that's not what the Kate, that's not what he was talking commenting. He was coming on a normal dress. When she turned around, so maybe you don't have all the information. Because when she turned around, her whole it was see through from the back. She had a thong, so her whole butt was out. <laughs> Again, that's a little bit more inappropriate. However, it's, it's does that start- change your opinion now? No, um, the part which one I'm glad I brought up. The only part of it that I, brought it up. I under that I understood that made any rationality of sense from what he said was he didn't like the fact that she was up there twerking with Usher. 
he felt some sort of way because they're in a relationship and she's out there being flirty with Archer. But she's an act. That's an acting. He does that all the time. I mean, right. It's a part of the show. I mean, and this dude Usher is a legend. And so if you can't respect Usher doing a dance with your woman, you're really insecure because this dude, extremely. this dude is the most he the women love this. It's dude a like show. Not, it's a not only that, show. it's a show, but like women would any woman would love to get on stage with Usher and do their. their I know I would, child. I mean, Listen, my man would be mad but, at me. Well, not not real mad because. Um, I'm not insecure about Usher Raymond, you know. I should. Yeah, I get both of a check, you know. Um, and I'm able to cash it. And I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> shit, there's I a couple of legends in the streets. Usher is one of them, and so he, this dude's hating for no reason. Yeah. He just looks stupid. You yeah, know? he um, he made himself look dumb. And I honestly, you know, you know what I'm I'm waiting for. I'm here. We go with the noise. Go ahead. Drink water, people. I, you know what I'm waiting for? And, and you know what excites me? Because I'm all about women power. What excites me is when she pop out with her little 45, 50-year-old man millionaire and she looking good and she even more naked with a millionaire. That's what I'm excited. I'm excited to come back to you with that story because I guarantee you that's what's going to happen. Because she's, she's looking good. Her baby, her baby body looking good. And a good point Jason made is that she's empowering, you know, so many women. I don't think she's had any surgery. She just had a baby and got the benefits of having a body, adi adi, um, from having a baby. And one thing, one point that you made that was really good that I didn't think about is that she's definitely empowering, you know, other mothers to feel comfortable right. with their new curves that they get from having a baby versus trying to like hurry up and have surgery to be a stick figure. No, you know, no, women need to embrace who they are, they they need to feel healthy in their body, in their own skin, and everybody knows what that feels like for themselves. But yeah. um, women are embraced and beautiful at right. all sizes. I think it really is about a woman's confidence, um, what type of level of freak she has inside her. If you listen to the sex, what kind episode. of freak? Wait, wait, wait. What do her being a freak got to do with her being confident in, in her in her body and her clothes? Well, that might actually make her walk with more swag. <laughs> okay. She can turn the nigga out. Have him making the weird noises like he's some sort of woman. That reminds me of a time. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do something more recent. No, sweetheart. Really? And I'm going to. But at the end of the day, I remind, I remember that time. I'm, listen, I'm not even going to do you like that. Um. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm you know I, I feel like we're, we're kind of on the same page um, with little Darius child, um, and y- you can go by your cancel whatever. Next hot topic, guys. Um, now this was a very interesting story that totally hit home to me. Um, I'm gonna play a clip because now that audio is working. I want I want you guys to listen to something. So for all of you guys who have the own network and you watch Love and Marriage Hunt. Bill, I love, love, love that show. Um, with the show. with the with the Holtz. Um, normally, what's in the news is um, Martell and Melody Holt. Um, but there's a different love and marriage Huntsville couple in the spotlight this week. I'm gonna play you guys a clip, and I want to get um your opinion. Where, despite that much of a sexual person. To where, despite what she's going through right now, you still feel like there's a happy medium in terms of her pleasuring you. There's a difference between wants and needs, all right? And I'm a person who actually needs sex, not a person who wants sex. Now, at times I want it, but I actually need it. Life throws us curveballs like what we're going through right now. What Kimmy is doing is admirable as a spouse. To roll over and suffer through it fakes it all for me because at that moment it's something that she completely didn't desire right so i look at it as her that much standing by me while i'm standing by her as difficult as it may seem we should all feel that we would be better people and say oh no i don't want or need sex for however long it takes for you to recover but we then live in reality where that's not true i want to ask you this need sex not want it you need it obviously mm-hmm. there's things we need we need oxygen we need water we need there's certain things we need in order to be able to live a, a, a healthy life why do you need sex 
I need sex like Carlos needs mess. Girl! And that's where we are. So, okay. If you watch Love and Marriage Huntsville, or even if you don't, Kimmy is his wife, and Kimmy has recently been diagnosed with, I think, breast cancer. Um, and they, he was on an interview, and he was explaining how, you know, it's very admirable that she can turn over and take, you know, sex and how basically, I think he even said on one part of the interview that we didn't play that, you know, that's kind of her job as a wife to make sure that he's sexually fulfilled. Um, and, you know, even though she has cancer, he respects the fact that she turns over and takes it because he has a very high sex drive. Now, Jason, I know you can relate to this. What? Are well, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm qualified to speak on this topic. I understand where he's coming from 150%. I've actually yeah. been, um, though, very um, timid and calm with my sex drive recently. And now that I'm <laughs> 40 plus. So my, I've been very patient. Mm. Um, uh, so uh, I'm actually getting more patient as I become a middle-aged older man. So I'm becoming more patient. Now, what I, what I understand no. from what he says is very simple. I mean, first, some men... He says that he needs sex, and some men need sex. I mean, from the manliest man to the girliest man, they still need sex because it, it stimulates health, endorsements, something to live for, something happy. In Endo- life. Wait, endorsements? Endor- endorphins, <laughs> which will turn into endorsements. You know, But a man, it, it improves. It's a, it's a scientific fact that sex improves a man's health, cardiovascular health, mental health. And can allow him to live longer. So sex is actually. Um, and so if a man actually feels like he needs it. He does need it. Now. When someone is going through chemotherapy. To suggest that they should roll over and take it whenever. Comes off a bit insensitive. Um, however. Um, he feels like she can roll over and you know. Maybe you know he, he only needs a few minutes, so <laughs> you know she that chemo won't she won't die off of that. So Jesus, just give him his few minutes, because otherwise he's gonna have to find you know he's gonna have to find sister girl or, or an escort. He doesn't or, have to do anything because of the need that he feels. And let's just be real on the Melanie P podcast because that's what I thought it was about. I mean, real raw. Um, that's scary. That that's scary. You know, shout out to Sheldon for, you know, the intro that just kills it. But look, it, this is what it is. I mean, I'll toss it back to you, man. Thank you me. for tossing it back to me on the Jason P podcast. <laughs> um, disgusting. I'm very disgusted. Now, again, you know, you, like you said, we keep it raw and transparent. Um, we just had a baby together. Okay. <laughs> oh, a little over a year ago. And... um. Baby. While we were together, um, my sex drive went totally down because after I had Bailey, our baby, something happened to my libido. And um, like Kim, I did turn around. I did turn over. Because even for me, during sex, it was very uncomfortable and fearful um, having a baby at my age and having sex. But I did it um, as much as I could. And then... <laughs> he's looking for more sex. Me, that's, please, that, you're, that's you're cutting it. me off. He's looking for more Jason, sex. you're cutting me off again. You, you talked for a million okay. years. I'll, I'll and let I didn't you finish anything. your chemo. That, that, that's comparable. That's not funny. No, it's horrible. That's not funny. No, it's not. And that's too Don't far. compare what he's let doing. Me, I'm not even done comparing because okay. you cut me off. I wasn't done with my take. <laughs> anyway, if I can get myself out. Um, you just threw off my, my rhythm. So anyway... um. You know, so I can understand how that feels to obviously I don't have, you know, cancer, thank God. But it's like I understand how that feels to have a partner with an abnormally high sex drive and they have a need and you don't have a desire. But, you know, because you're trying to do the right thing, then you, you know, turn over and just, you know, endure it. <laughs> that sex isn't satisfying. Let me finish. Let me finish. Please don't cut me off. Here we um, go. So. I understand where that comes from. The difference is she's a wife. And so it's very different because I do feel like as a wife, I would have more of a stronger obligation to satisfy my husband. Um, really not as a um, baby mama or a girlfriend like that. No, but like as a wife, I feel like, you know, when you take those vowels, I'm very, 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 um, I take that shit real serious. And so I feel like that's different, but he is wrong for that. I feel like he is, is saying that, you know, she's supposed to do this and blah, 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 blah. 
he is he doesn't have cancer he doesn't know what she's going through mentally how bad she feels because she doesn't have a libido that's a very horrible thing that, that is a very horrible feeling for you to be you know a very sexual person and then one you know day you wake up and your shit's gone it's the same like men kind of have amnesia because if a man loses his erection or loses his you know stamina or loses his ability to have a sexual desire the world ends he feels horrible he feels low and you know you're supposed to be like empathetic towards it if a woman's libido changes or if her sex drive changes oh just turn over and endure it like what you know what i'm saying like what in the world is he saying like this is another situation where a man is being stupid and he's going on somewhere on social media or going in some interview and, and making his woman feel bad now kim did kimmy did go on tgif friday or whatever that show is on fox and she did you know kind of clean it up for him i think just because she's her his, his wife you know she cleaned it up for him and said you know she kind of initiated the conversation about her libido and blah 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 and well, how she the, the, how she enjoys having sex with her husband and how it's a loss for her too but i really do think that as a wife she was just trying to help make her husband look not look so bad in the media well here we go again she, she was also saying that she did not she was nervous that he might seek for sex elsewhere since he has a need if she wouldn't provide it to him. So she clearly clarified, and I saw it in real time, that she never ever once thought that he would go outside their marriage for sex. She said that she felt bad, but she never had any concern that she would that he would go outside of his marriage, their marriage and cheat. Well, she um, said that, I, that she I, felt like the words were, were misconstrued. Okay, and I appreciate you clarifying her words from a male perspective. She. And, you know, to not be politically incorrect any more than I not always am going to be. Any more politically incorrect you than I already am. Child, I'm very politically incorrect if you listeners don't know. Always. I just don't have a problem with it because we're all mere morsels in this galaxy. Mortals, not Mor mortals. No, we're so, we're so small other than this podcast that... We're just a morsel in time. So I'm going to say what the fuck I have to say because your little opinion doesn't matter. Who? anybody's oh and you better get this in the gut. shit <laughs> he's talking to the bottom line is <laughs> it just looks bad on paper because she has she's going through chemo and you still need her to turn over so, so dog you bumping i can her, see you doing you that pumping her you, I can and see she, you, you know that. she's got cancer and and, and and tumors in her body or chemo and you need that and need to, uh chemo's over shoddy turn over in about six hours but let's be Seriously? again raw and transparent did you not do that to me not not I, I, not I, now with chemo not with chemo that's but when, horrible so comparison. let's take chemo out but when i was pregnant oh, no, when i was take chemo out when i was not else to talk about let's not even compare no knock on wood when i chemo was pregnant to, to, when do you we, we, we bind okay, that so in a whole new so, so whatever please so let's, let's uh, move on i'm doing that comparable. and you're talking about it let it go okay so what i'm saying is saying because I'm being raw and transparent, so don't cut me off like you've been doing a whole podcast. Um, when I was pregnant, y'all, I, I got so many examples. Like, even recent. Let's fuck pregnant. Let's go recent. I was in, I was having something wrong with my stomach recently. Like, some type of pain in my stomach. <laughs> and this is hard. You don't have a lot of sex. No. Right? You're not doing, really? too, you're doing way too much. We have more than, well, anyway. We have very little sex. It's not that much, you know, so. And it'll be none tonight since you're saying that. So at the end of the day, um, on this podcast, really, that you, please. So what I'm trying to say is that there was a time recently when we were, um, I was having a horrible, horrible, horrible stomach pain. I have no idea what was wrong with me. Like, I, I don't know what was going on with me, but that, it was horrible. It had been a couple of days since we had had sex. And um, I knew that you couldn't wait no more. So I was in pain. I turned over on my stomach and I laid there. <laughs> I don't you, want you to be hurt. I'm, I'm No, I'm let me finish. Please, please, please respect me. Respect me, please. Here we go. Because I'm trying to make a point for our listeners and for you. And I'm not even a wife, okay? I'm just, okay. So at the end of the day, I was in so much pain that I turned over and with every thrust, with every pump, I was in tears. <laughs> I was literally in tears, like tears. Not only I wasn't in silent tears, I was in vocal tears, like tears. And I was like, "Oh my god, this hurts!" But crying, and you didn't stop. That was only one time. <laughs> no, it was one time. Yeah, but I felt bad about it, was, it after. No, you did. Yeah, I did. I you didn't feel bad. You were coming. 
You, you were no, coming and you almost good. fell over me. Oh, really? No, and that's why I wouldn't I do slow. that with chemotherapy. Number he number did, bro, two. I would that's feel that's bad number one. About that when I was pregnant, I was very afraid of having sex pregnant because i didn't have to do that my first time around i was very afraid had little sex. and i had to buy this thing to lay in and it's so sick it's so sick that you say we have little sex well i, well, I know for sure we're having Ooh, more yeah. sex than most, most people that i personally know and and don't do that please re- read the room seriously but secondly when i was pregnant and i had sex i was uncomfortable i was scared but i did it I did it. And women do this all the time. This woman has a, has a deadly disease. And what's she, what is she worried about? Her husband coming. It's, it's, it's just horrible. It is too much. And it's horrible. He, he should be, again, I, I don't agree with, I understand how he feels. I think he's gone too a little bit. He should give her more, a little bit more breaks. A little bit more breaks or a I mean, lot. No, I understand. What all I, the breaks. She deserves all the breaks. All the breaks. She still has to roll over occasionally. I know you don't mean that. Yes. I understood. I understand. It's like she's alive still. I mean, I know chemotherapy must be horrible, but she's still alive. And so she, needs, she still <laughs> occasionally needs to turn over. <laughs> if if you only knew. Because that really says a lot. It explains a Not lot. all but, the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I would be less frequent than what I would require from you under yours, and I felt bad. I don't want you to be in tears unless I'm real desperate. You didn't stop. I was literally because like, I needed to nut. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, you don't need to nut. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Otherwise, you get blue balls. You you don't have blue balls, and you haven't had blue balls. Yes, I have. No, you have. I have had some. That's not. I've never in my life, like, like you know, women joke about, oh, you know, lying about not wanting to have sex. That particular night, I'll never forget that shit, man. Laying there, and I, I don't, I don't know what was wrong with me. I, I remember, I don't remember what was wrong with me, but I remember that I was like, I was in so much pain that I couldn't even use the bathroom. It was like horrible, and I've never experienced that before. But just because these men with these abnormally high sex drives, you know, you feel bad and you feel this obligation. And again, she's a weeks. wife. So it's like, I, I couldn't imagine how I would have felt, you know, that way, but it's just like that pain with every thrust. I was being gentle. You were not. Yes, I was. You were not. You weren't. Probably because of how sassy you were. So yeah, man, like, um, we don't stand for you, Maurice. I know I don't. And, um, I just, I just hope the tables are never turned. That's the thing. Karma's a bitch, man. And I really hope the tables are never, ever, ever turned. I really do. I hope the tables are never turned on what? you, though. So he gets chemo and she forces him to strap down and suck his dick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the table's turn would be, for, no, you're backwards. The table's turn would be to strap him down and have her eat her vagina. That's the table's turn, sweetheart. You're lost. He might want to eat. This is horrible. This is really bad. Here we go. Um, I feel like, you know, that's, and this is an, another episode, but it's like when you have some, ooh, when you have somebody that, um, you know, has a, a higher sex drive, it's just, it's just a lot. It, it can be a lot when you're coming through life changing situations, like having a baby. Like I, I felt when I, when my libido went down, um, I felt so bad and I was taking pills and all kind of things because I felt so bad and then to have the pressure of someone, you know, hounding you. It's, it's a oh, lot. It's, horrible. I, I, it's a lot. I, I, I tried to do better, but some people have a need. I'm not, I didn't try to be, a, you know, quite as go as hard as Marie, but are you still feeling the same way with your libido? <laughs> you still feel like that? Or do you feel like you things are settling in after having a baby? <laughs> settling in? Are you feeling more, a little bit more like your normal self with your sex drive? Well, there's other things going on that are not for this show as, you know, so, you know, no comment. But for our last topic, guys, for our last topic, baby weight, we, excuse me, you lost all the baby weight, but you still have the same baby libido, right? For our last topic, (laughs) um, most recently we had Essence Fest and drink, go ahead and drink it. (laughs) <laughs> so loud um gotcha. don't do me because and here's what's happening you're looking at my drink make sure i drink it all because you think i'm gonna have great sex if i drink all this drink i know you i'm in your head i know no, you. you prefer that it should be less in a bit it's ambitiousness anyway um for the for the last 
hot topic so most recently we had essence fest which i hope i go to that next year i feel like every year i say i'm gonna go to essence fest and every year me and my friends forget to go with our lives but um indy i reach out i'm not my hair brown skin blah 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 ready to love yeah, it's good in the city of clothes no matter where you know there was always be the india <laughs> <laughs> you loser okay um brown skin oh, you, you know, know i love brown skin. skin you don't got no brown skin <laughs> you don't got no caramel skin <laughs> It's a little caramel. I'll make me a song called Caramel Skin. I don't skin. know where it begins, you know. We don't know where your brows can begin. We don't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Indy Irene voiced her. I going to end, though. What? You're disgusting. <laughs> um, Indy Irene voiced her opinion on Meg the Stallion and Janelle Monet's performance at this year's Essence Festival. She commented on Monet and Megan the Stallion's sexual presentations at the festival and called it a lack of discretion. There's been a lot of outrage and commentary um, about Indy Irene's comments. Now, Indy Irene, she's supposed to be a I'm not my hair women activist, and here she is putting two black women down. I don't agree with india girl shut up i am so tired of people using the internet to voice their lame ass opinions i mean i get it we all have opinions or like assholes we all have them but don't use your opinion darius or india to put down another black person okay meg the stallion is okay it's a stallion a horse a stallion a woman being called a stallion it means that you are a horse you are a horse i've been called it several times you're a horse you're body banging you got ass for days that is me so at the end of the day who like the stallion and me don't do me jason let me see (laughs) if you play your cards right um i got space (laughs) <laughs> well you lose a space so that's not a good example yeah, um so i'm so disgusted honestly at uh like india wh- wh- you, where's your last record girl like i don't like that this is essence fest is such a positive um camaraderie of black women to come together and to get together and just be you know what's the word i want to use just show good energy show show congeniality <laughs> no it's coming together coming know. together basically and for this black woman to denounce um you know meg the stallion and janelle monet people have really been coming for janelle monet since her music video with them um le- other lesbians like who cares like nobody else is complaining why are you complaining who asked you to make a statement like let them be them like essence fest is not children's fest essence fest is not uh elmer elmo stru- uh fest or it's not disney world stress it's essence fest anybody who go to new orleans for essence fest come on new orleans where prostitution is legal isn't it like girl like we are not in disney world what do you, like if a bitch on stage showing her titties and showing her fucking ass who cares it's bigger fish to fry what are your thoughts well i mean i understand i mean with indy i read I'm old school, so I understand the indie I read because I do like her music. I mean, mm. in all honesty, she's not a looker all the day. Oh, she looked all right because I respect women. You know, every woman has some you sort of sense of beauty. Every woman has you something. Shower? What? You are a shower? Not yet. Every woman has something that's beautiful about her. Okay. Not every woman. Most of them, you know. Um, you playing. can find something. I'm playing. We do. Okay. Women are beautiful. There's something. Okay. Um, but. You know, Indy Irie was never known for her body or her face or beauty that way. That's and true. so she never yeah. received that type of accolade or never got that type of energy or, but it even goes beyond that because, but, you know, but it, it, as well, because, you know, she mm. is not, you know, th- you know, th- that type of person who she is. Yeah, but that's not women, her again, I obviously support women just being who they are as a girl. Well, you love Meg Italian. Well, I like Meg the Stallion until she loses some of her booty, you know. I, I like it. I prefer her being thick. But it go to shade. Um, you know, and Janelle Monae is way too small, whatever. But I respect her expression and what she's doing. Like, but what really was interesting to me is when India said that this might not age well. Well, we know it's not going to age well. I mean, you know, How I mean, you? it's just horrible to say because obviously. You know, when when they're about 63 and the titties are 68 and, and her titties sagging down, she's not going to be holding it out. Um, you know, but women, you know, well, can keep their nowadays. sex appeal all day. You know, McDonald's still do it. So, But she's saying it won't age well, McDonald's. but Madonna. Oh. 
She's a, she, but also she was Madonna is in the is in ICU right now. <laughs> we've got to pray for a material girl, you know, in this material world. Um, but at the end of the day, India Re, she's just trying to black women are judged. White women, whatever, different cultures look at the essence. They right. see this. They don't know other things. So I respect what India said in that sense also is just in something that black women are on a showcase, especially when men, especially in the music, are so disrespectful. Right. Towards women. Everything is about sex. We need to put each other down. Pussy, you know, banging this hoe, whatever the case, talking to women in such disrespectful ways. Um you know, th- then and when you're shaking your ass and wearing short stuff or showing your titties, areola, if they want to use it, um, I, I like the eye candy, you know. Uh, and I think women should be able to do what the fuck they want. But you're going to get some of these people like India, especially ones who never were the beauty queens, to, you know, throw in their little shade. Throw in but their here's the crazy you part. Know, but I can understand from both sides. Here's the crazy part, yo. All three of these stories is about a nigga, a man... Or, well, in this, in this case, a woman that might be a lesbian, because let's be clear. Um, right. You know, policing what a woman wears, how she moves her body. Like, come on, man. Mauricio wants, you know, sex from a, a woman who has cancer, you know. Um, here we go with Darius Nobody policing his non-wife. I mean, are we kidding here? Here go NDRE. Is she a man or woman? Policing somebody she don't even know. Like, keeps, you know, I know I got a podcast and I know I'm, I'm on here with the opinions, but sometimes keep the opinions to yourself. Keep the opinions to yourself. NDRE, where have you been? Go into the studio, make another hit, and She keep made it enough there. money and, and I don't think she has... I don't know about that. Uh, well, no, she managed it, I think. But I think that she... Um, if she could come up with a hit like Brown Skin, she would. Because it would be did. out here. She's got a few hits. She has a lot she, of hits. Okay, she just so, sung two of them. <laughs> okay, so I have respect for her. She doesn't need to do anything else other than just do her little live shows whenever she's good. I don't. I think that she is. So the bottom line is she's, she's good. She can but say whatever she wants. is about black women coming together and having camaraderie. Can, yeah, India can say whatever once because she she's a pioneer. I respect India. The bottom line is she doesn't have much to say because she's not a beauty queen. So she doesn't. She never walked in the shoes of having some ass to show. She hasn't yeah. walked in the shoes of having sex appeal to sell. Yeah. You've walked in the shoes. You're right. Of being a, a poet. And a great entertainer, multi uh, and someone who burns instrumentals, incense. being that neo soul vibe woman. You have all that love. shit. You killed it. I like that song too, India. You killed it, but you were not a. Why are you hiding from? When, when I was in college, I had my roommate who used to play this song on repeat. It was sad. That's a really beautiful song, but the bottom line is, look, India, you're neo soul man, and you can neo say whatever, soul, and you've yeah. earned the right to say whatever you want about these hoes. If they, if you have more class than really? them, it is what it is. But no, the bottom don't. line is, I know all of us can throw glass from a stone house, or we got glass in that motherfucker somewhere, and we throwing stones. So at the end of the day, <laughs> she can say whatever she so wants. Scary. You know, maybe she's, you know, maybe I don't know. You know, maybe she, I but it is what it is. But she killed. She did what she did. Dream. Um, and honestly, Megan the Stallion, um, you know, to be has done her thing. She's she's tried uh, and done well at what she's done. Um, shaking her ass, so she better not lose any more ass, you know, or else. And here's no more hot wings, no more spicy chicken licking thick wings for you, Meg. Every time you talk about a woman, or I feel like you're trying to be really shady towards me because you know I've lost a bunch of weight, and I feel no, like you, every you time got some curves. I've got some curves. And every, every time you talk about I a woman, compare you to make the stallion. You got more curves than her. Whatever you, you, you trying to just be whatever, but nah. you, you keep doing that. You, you keep trying to throw off on me. I've heard you do it several times. Though I don't like I don't like no skinny women. I I don't like skinny women. Very much. You know, I think that skinny women can be pretty. It's just not enough meat to fill up my plate on a consistent basis. We're going to meat in this house anyway, so. Uh, We're going to eat some some impossible burgers. (sighs) Anyway, guys, listen, thank you so much for coming to another episode of the That's That's Scary. scary That's scary. That's scary. Are you having a a malfunction? malfunction? That's scary. You had a malfunction right now? Every week, a new topic, a new guest host. (laughs) He's AI. He's having a real. He's not really right here right now. He's having a malfunction. Should Talk I to press him, your girl. button? <laughs> That's not even what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming to another episode of That's Scary with Melanie P podcast. Listen, make sure, make sure you are 
on my YouTube and you have subscribed. Now, I got over a thousand followers and I only see 60 people subscribe to my YouTube. So make sure as soon as you hang up on this podcast, you go to YouTube, you hit subscribe, and then you go to share and you share it with five family members, okay? Make sure you're following me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, y'all. We're going to see y'all next week. And I'm so grateful for... Lambo's going to get on. No, nigga. Good night, guys. Lambo be next.